So we'll see if this works. I think what we'll see is if I can get that in there in the picture. All right. So I'm just going to begin here. All right. Um, before I get into this stuff, because this is actually the the stuff you don't know how to do, and I've never taught before. Um, I'm going to review how to do the pH of strong stuff and why it's a little bit easier than this crap. This crap requires ice tables and there are some uh, little secrets and hints that you're going to have to know in order to do this stuff right. Okay. So this will help you because we had some, we had some, uh, how do I say this? We had some issues, a, a few issues with the pH assignment that's due today. So I'm going to show you guys some of the issues and problems that people had with that. Okay, so this is uh, this is what makes this equilibrium stuff. This calculating the pH of weak acids, and like I said, I've never you've never learned this. I am going to try to keep it simple this week. I'll probably do something today, and then I don't know, maybe Friday or something. Like I said, I'll record both things so you guys can see it. Okay, so. We'll start with the strongs. These are the strong acids. You definitely don't have to write this stuff down because this is all listed in your book and we've already kind of discussed this. Um, so everything we're gonna talk about today is not this, okay? Is not this stuff. We're not going to find the pHs using ice tables of any of these things. The main idea is a strong acid, whether we write it like this, I wanna make, this a little bit different here okay so you can see it a little bit so whether we what the what the all right this is what a strong acid does it's 100 percent from left to right is that the correct it's the correct orientation right thumbs up if it's the correct orientation for you okay sweet so from left to right uh, as we go through this, this breaks up 100%. You can write strong acids as an Arrhenius acid like this or a brown Sidlori acid. I don't want you to be confused if your professor ever does this because this literally means the same thing as this. These guys are identical. I said that in the last presentation. Okay. The thing that makes this a strong acid is that if you grabbed a jar of HCl in aqueous solution, it would literally be 100% this crap, okay? There is no equilibrium established, and that's what makes strongs strong. Now, when you calculate the pH of strongs, and I'm going to show you kind of the, the issues that people had here, I have a couple of examples up here on the board. Um, the pH of strongs is easy, but what we have to do and what I saw people doing, uh, making the mistake of, is you have to first identify by looking at the formula, if that is an acid or a base, okay? Typically with strong acids and strong bases, they typically are Arrhenius acids or bases. Arrhenius acids have an H at the beginning, they have an OH at the end for the bases. So when you do this, what you have to do, and the reason the pH is easy for this, is because the negative log, of the H plus concentration is how we find pH, okay? We're gonna do that as well with weak acids in a little bit. But the idea is, is that you've gotta know, is this gonna give me H plus or is it going to give me OH minus? And what I saw people doing was everybody did the acids right for the first four, but we had some mistakes with the base. So I'll show you where that mistake is. But in general, to find the pH of an acid, you have to understand that this, at, this guy is gonna break into H plus. So when you take the negative log of the concentration, the pH would be 0.65, okay? The pOH for this guy would be 14 minus 0.65. So we get about 13.4 or something. Like I said, do not stress about sig figs with pH. We're kind of on a time crunch. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking sig figs and stuff like that. Just do what your professor wants you to do down the road. Okay. But do you, I guess I know you guys are all muted. So like me talking to you is a little bit weird here. Can you guys give me a thumb up, thumbs up if that makes sense for 
acids and finding the pH of an acid if your camera's on. Okay, sweet. Here's what people did wrong. What people did wrong on the assignment, and I don't know if it was number two or three, I cannot remember. Um, what I did is I correct, I correct the, the assignment. I tried to send it back to you, and then I said, hey, if you want to resubmit this and do it again, uh, I'll give you credit. That's how I'm doing these assignments right now, just because, let's be real, let's just try to learn uh, as much as we can. But here's what everybody did wrong. What people did wrong was, is they saw this concentration and they got so used to just putting the concentration in that when you take the negative log of 1.2, they said, okay, the pH is, and this is not right, so don't write this down, negative 0.08 or something like that, okay? Here's the deal. That's not the pH. It's not the pH because this is a base and this breaks into OH minus. So when you take the negative log of that, you're actually finding the pOH. Thumbs up if that makes sense to you. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, very nice. All right, so that's the idea behind pH is a strong. So what you have to do is you have to identify if they're acids or bases. And then when you take the negative log, you have to pay attention to, am I finding the pH or pOH? Okay? That's the pH of strongs. Weak acids are a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of go through these. And today, I don't even know how far we'll go. I've got kind of a timer on here. I don't want to talk too much. But the, here's the big picture, okay? Weak acids don't ionize 100%. So you can't just take the negative log of the initial concentration because it's not a what you see is what you get. What happens is, is that since they partially ionize, you don't get as much of this H3O plus or what we call H plus as you would expect. Okay. I have this written. Now you might ask, what the heck is ha? All right. This is some random acid. That's a weak acid. That could be HF. That could be HClO. That could be H2CO3. Uh, Just substitute anything in there for A. Okay? So A is not on the periodic table. You're probably, well, where is A at? Uh, the idea is, is that because, let's just say we had a concentration of 1.4 molar for this. Because this doesn't ionize 100%, that is not 1.4. We have to figure out what it is. We figure out what it is based on um, what we know about equilibrium, okay? So if we write the KEQ for this reaction, right? The KEQ has a special name in this chapter. It's called a KA. They're not really creative, okay? They call it a KA because it's the K of a weak acid. The KA could be written one of two ways depending on how we wanna do the reaction. So this will be our first reaction. This will be our second reaction. I'll show you guys how the KAs look, all right? So the KA is H3O plus, A minus, all over HA. Do you guys understand why I did not put water in there? Yeah? No? Yeah? I didn't put water in there because this is aqueous. That's butt crack, right? That's the that's liquid. That's aqueous, that's aqueous. So we don't put water in there. The other Ka and the other way that these are represented is like this. If you don't want to write it with a reaction with water, you'll write it like this. I don't know what your professor is going to do, so I'm going to show you both. You guys can do it however you want. These things mean exactly the same thing. If you know that, then you know that. Okay? So both of these are the same. So we use a Ka. A Ka is a value. And by the way, um, if you are or have your books, and like I said, I will scan and send this into you, or I'll probably just post it in the classroom. Of course, this book, somebody ripped the Ka page out of it. That's awesome. So in the back of the book, it's called Appendix C or D. I can't remember which one it is. It's Appendix D. So we're talking about page 1126. You're going to see a whole list 
of KAs. Don't stress it if you don't understand what the KA2 and the KA3 is. We'll get to that in our next discussion. All right? So that's that. All right? It's called the acid dissociation constant. That's what they call that. It's the acid dissociation constant. So basically it tells you these KA. And by the way, if you look on page 1126, if you see them, and I'll just give you one off the top of my head. Um, I think HF on there has a K of 6.08 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay. So what does that mean? The Ka for HF is that value. So going back to equilibrium, if a K is very small, that means there's not a lot of products. There's more reactants than products. You'll notice that every Ka on that list is going to be a small number. Okay. And actually, it's going to work in our favor. and It's going to allow us to not have to worry about the uh, quadratic very much. I'll show you a little uh, pro tip with a little bit. The Ka tells you the strength. So if you have a bigger Ka, it's a stronger acid. And I know these are all weak acids, but everything has its own level of strength. So you can have, you can be a weak acid, but you can be a stronger weak acid. I know that sounds stupid. Like if you said, if you took two kindergartners, you'd say that both kindergartners are fairly weak. One could be stronger than the other. All right. So that's why we, we assign these things as weak acids, but they all have their own strength. Okay. So we're going to calculate Ka from pH, and then we're going to calculate pH from Ka. That's going to be our goal today. All right. So this is our first example. By the way, you could simply look up this answer in the back on page 1126, but since you all don't have that, we're gonna calculate it today, all right? So we have this solution of 0 0.10 molar HCHO2, which um, is called formic acid. If you're looking on your chart there, formic acid, if you've ever been bitten by a red, like a fire ant, this is what they're injecting into is formic acid. So stings a little. All right. So formic acid solution, it has a pH of 2.38. Calculate the Ka. So what we're going to do is going to use an ice table. Because I'm going to be a lazy turd here, my ice table and the, the, the uh, reaction I'm going to write is going to be this guy right here. Okay, I'm not going to write it with water because, you know, we don't have to. So let's not worry about that. We'll bust out this ice table and talk about the stuff that we are given here. All right. So to calculate Ka, I'm just going to go ahead and write the Ka for formic acid here. We would need to know at equilibrium what the H plus is. We would need to know what the CHO2 minus is. And we would need to know at equilibrium what this value is. Okay. So we got to get this this and this in our little box so we're going to fill in our ice table okay um does anybody know where that goes anybody know where that guy goes and i'll show you the major mistake here that people will make here whenever you're presented with an initial concentration that's where that goes we're going to assume that we're making this solution so those guys are going to be zero. Since everything's one to one here, you have a minus x, you have a plus x, and you have a plus x. Okay, don't write this down because this is not correct, but I'm going to show you the mistake that people make. You guys see that pH there? The number one mistake people make is they put that right there. That's the pH. That's not the H plus. What we have to do is we have to find what the H plus is and plug it into that spot. Okay, I'm going to say that again. We're going to use the pH. Thumbs up if you understand where I, what I did there. Thumbs up if you understand what I did there, okay? 
So if you are gonna, if you have a pH, you need to work backward to find the H plus. You've got to do that. The pH is always taken when we get to equilibrium. So if we take 10 to the negative 2.38, we're gonna get 0 0.004 two or so. Like I said, don't worry about sig figs with that. Okay. Is it pretty obvious what X is here? Yeah, okay. So if that's 0 0.0042 and that's 0 0.0042 and this little booger here is gonna be 0 0.0958 or whatever, doesn't matter, okay? So now that you have that, we can find Ka. We can just plug into our expression there, okay? If you have your calculators, I'm gonna give you guys a uh, one minute to do that, all right, while I do it. I don't know where I'm going to write this. Write it up here. You guys can see that. That's what I got. And I don't know if anyone else can see, but I can't see that. Who can't see that? You can't Jaylee? see that? Okay. Are you on your phone? Are you on your computer? I can't either. Let me put it right here then. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. If you looked up formic acid's value, if you actually had your book, it would be 1.8 times 10 negative 4. So, yay, we're great. Okay. What questions do you have about that? Speak now if you have any. Five, four, three, two, one, moving on here. Okay, so I feel like everybody's decent here. Like I said, I'm gonna record this. I hope it records. Okay, so here we have another one. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to find percent ionized today as well. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to write, do a nice table. This problem is exactly like the previous one, but here's the thing. Does anybody have a clue what niacin is? Anybody have a clue? All right, nobody has a clue what niacin is. You don't know the formula, but here's the thing. We don't have to know the formula. I'm gonna just say our formula is H-niacin, and that's the beauty of this, right? Because H-niacin, and you guys know why I wrote that H at the beginning? Because I'm gonna go and go to H plus, and then niacin minus. Because I don't know the formula of niacin, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to set my ice table the exact same way, and then I'll show you guys how to calculate percent ionized. All right? So I'm going to give you guys, uh, I don't know, a little bit of time to set up this ice table. Here's your pH of 3.26. See if you guys can calculate the Ka for niacin. All right? Calculate the Ka for niacin. So if we don't have like the formula, is everything, we just treat it as it's all one-to-one? -one? Absolutely. Yep. That's the beauty of this chapter is that literally every ice table, <laughs> every single time it's going to be minus X plus X plus X every time. We're only going to do one of these at a time. So Perfect. it's delightful. I'll just start filling this in. Don't pay attention to this yet. I'm just giving you a formula for the next part, okay?
Okay, so I ran out of room here, guys. So I was gonna put 5.5 times 10 negative four times 5.5 to the negative four, but I just put it squared there. Everybody good with that? Understand why I did that? I just ran out of room there, okay? That's my dogs, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, 1.6 times 10 negative fifth ish 1.55 doesn't really matter it's a k doesn't have a label everybody cool with that you got negative five uh yeah did i screw that up maybe i did maybe you did oh yeah i'm being stupid okay <laughs> Yeah, so it should be negative five. 1.6 times negative five. Everybody cool with that? One of the ways that uh, when I give you this little cheat code in a little bit, one of the ways that we decide if we can use the cheat code or not is to use something called percent ionized. This is an equation you're going to want to get down, okay? Percent ionized, I'm going to make it a percentage there. We'll put times 100. So to find percent ionized, what you're going to do is you're going to take your equilibrium H plus value, and you're going to divide by your initial acid value and then make it a percentage. So percent ionized for this acid would be 2.8% ionized. Okay, we'll talk about what that is going to mean for us down the road. Look at that. There you go. Now you can really see that decimal. Right. So 2.8% ionized. We'll talk about why we care about this equation. This is going to be your friend, I promise you, because there is a shortcut to doing what I'm going to show you next, where you don't have to use the quadratic. Now, I know some of you guys, because you have calculators that can do the quadratic or because you will just plug it into GeoGebra or whatever, will just use the quadratic. But there is a little cheat code to doing acids and bases, and I'll show you why in a second, okay? Wait, how did that 2.8%? Uh, it took this value, 5.5 .5 times 10 negative fourth, that's the H plus at equilibrium. I divided by 0 0.02, and then I multiplied by 100 to make it a percentage. Ah, uh, okay. See, so it's always gonna be this box divided by that box every time, okay? okay? If it was a base, which we're not even close to doing base stuff yet, but if it was a base, this would be OH minus divided by the initial base. Make cool with that? Yeah, don't just delete that. Don't worry about that right now, okay? All right, I'm gonna delete this and move on. If you have any issues, holler at me now. Okay. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use pH. I'm going to rewrite this. This is uh, this acid is written differently depending on how old your professor is. So um, if you have a really old professor, they're going to write it like that. That's the Chethri Ku, huh? All right. I have this H bolded. You probably can't see that, but that's the acidic hydrogen that we're going to take off of it. Or it's written HC2H3O2, okay? That's the same acid that's called acetic acid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to find the pH using the Ka. And so it's still going to involve an ice table, right? When we find the pH, I'm going to show you what people are going to do wrong. Don't do this. But here's what happens. People will look at this and they'll go, oh, yeah, finding the pH is really easy. If I take the negative log 
of the concentration, that's going to give me the pH. So I take the negative log of 0.3 and I got 0.52 and booyah, I'm done. Here's the deal. This is a weak acid. It's a weak acid, so it doesn't ionize 100%. So you aren't going to get all of that business right there. When you do your ice table, the value you will have for your H plus at equilibrium will not be 0.3. That's what we have to find out. That's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. Strong acid, if there's strong acid, we just do that and we're done. But a weak acid, we have to do the following, okay? So here's our reaction. To find the pH of a weak acid, what you have to do is you gotta figure out what that is at equilibrium of your ice table. That is the whole goal. Okay? That is our goal in this problem, is to figure out what that is. So, we start filling our ice table here. You may notice an issue or a problem we might be faced with here. How are we going to solve for X when you brave souls unmute yourself and tell me how we're going to do it? Set it equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Absolutely. So we got to set it equal to the Ka. The Ka was given to you. So here's what we're going to have. We're going to have 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to x squared over 0 0.300 minus x. Okay? Brave soul. What's the issue with that? Quadratic. Quadratic, okay. But here's the deal. I'm going to show you guys a little ditty here that works a lot, okay? Um, so far, has X been a very big number for us? No. No. <laughs> has not been a big number for us, okay? So if this number is like, let's say we get like 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. When you do subtraction there, is it really going to do much to 0.30? No. Well, yeah, no, it's going to be like 0.29994 or something like that, right? Okay. This is a shortcut that I'm going to show you, and this is where we're going to use the percent ionize this, to show you how this works, all right? So I, I might actually be doing this a little out of order because I don't know what kind of slides I posted. So sorry about that, but I'm just going to show you this right now, okay? Here is the cheat code to acids and bases and finding pH with a weak, okay? What you can do to solve for X, and it works a lot of the time, and I'll show you when it doesn't work, is, can you guys see this right here? That little X right there? This is the cheat code. Because X is gonna be so small, we're gonna erase it there, and our answer with sig figs is gonna be close enough most of the time. Do you guys understand how we don't have to use this quadratic for this problem here? Yeah. Now that now we can we have x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an answer here. And Okay. So for x, I got 0 0.0023. Okay? Now, is that really what x is? Probably not. It's probably a little bit different, but a lot of the times when you do this final step, your answers turn out to be the same, okay? So if our goal is to find the pH, and we know that this is 0 0.0023, we take the negative log of 0 0.0023, okay? Negative log of 0 0.0023, all right? We get a pH of about 2.6. Much different than when we pretended that was a strong acid. We pretended that was a strong acid. 
to start, we said it, the pH is gonna be 0.52. So this is much different. This is a weak acid. Now, the question is, does this little cheat code work every single time? Guy, I wish it did. It doesn't work some of the times. So I'm gonna show you where it doesn't work, okay? So I'm gonna keep our values here and I'm gonna show you where it does not work, right? Does anybody have any questions about what just happened there? I'm gonna restate why the cheat code works most of the time. Most of the time, X is a very small number. If you take that number minus X, the number is really close to that original number. Therefore, we can sometimes just chop that step off and our answer is close enough with sig fix. Okay, that's why we do that. So here's how you test if your answer works or not, okay? So how you test if your answer works or not is you do percent ionized, okay? So the reason I showed you percent ionized on the previous slide is because there's a little rule that we're going to use. Okay, so this acid doing it this way is only 0.77% ionized. Here is the rule, 0.77, okay? Here is the rule. If it's greater than 5% ionized, you've got to use the quadratic. If it's greater than 5% ionized, you've got to use the quadratic. So when you do the, your final answer and you get to this step, immediately check your percent ionized and see if it's less than 5%. If it's less than 5%, your answer will be good enough. That is a secret a lot of professors do not tell you. So you spend most of your life doing the quadratic and what happens is, is that your answer with the cheat code is gonna be good enough three out of four times. Thumbs up if you guys understand what just happened there, okay? So that's our cheat code. Um, cool with that? I did all of this out of order. I did like basically this entire problem on this slide. I have a feeling that the rest of my slides are going to um, are going to describe what happened here. Yeah, the, there's the cheat factor. So I have it listed why the cheat factor works. So this slide's actually really nice for you is it kind of lays it all out what I just said. X is usually small, really small compared to the initial concentration. So when you 5% ionized, if it's greater than 5%, sorry, bro, you gotta go back and use the quadratic, okay? So you may have any questions about what happened there? Yeah, no? Okay. I'm good. You're good? Okay. I'm going to, yeah, so what I'll do with this stuff is I will post a couple of questions out of the book. Don't stress if you don't have the book because I will post literally the questions out of the book and I will also give you that uh, weak acid chart, okay? So if you don't, if you don't have um, the KA anywhere, you're gonna use that chart to figure it out. If you're solving for Ka, solve for the Ka and then use that chart to see if it was in the ballpark area, okay? All right, that's all we're going to do for this batch of stuff. I will post the next meet or hangout or whatever and we'll do the next step here because I think, yeah, the slides I shared with you, I gave you some problems. I'm not even sure we're gonna do those problems. They might be these problems, it might be some of them, all of them, I don't know, okay? Um, the next topic will be polyprotic acids, but that probably won't be until Friday, I'm guessing, or so. All right, okay, anybody have any questions?
Do we need to come get a book if we don't have one? If you don't have a book, I will make sure I post always the um, questions out of the book and I'll post any charts that you need. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Jaylee Snapchatting me right now. Good job, buddy. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's it, I'm gonna shut her down here. Okay. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop recording. And then, if you have any other questions here, um, 